What is up, Live Fighters? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I am very excited to have you. And wow, I see 1,000 subscribers, which is crazy because I don't even have like 10 friends. So 1,000 people watching my videos is awesome. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for the likes and the comments and the subscriptions. Um, everybody's been very, very cool. So rock on. Thank you so much. Um, today, I am bringing you something a little long awaited for me. I know none of you guys have been long awaiting it because who knows what I'm up to. Nobody's waiting for my shit, but um, I'm hoping you're going to be as excited about it as me. We are going over the uh, specifically the Crossfire DZ rig and more specifically its integration with the Crossfire CF2 rucksack. So as you guys know, I recently purchased uh, the Crossfire DZ rig right here. Um, it is fantastic. I like it a lot, but I actually really love my JJ's rig too, which is very similar. Why did I switch? Well, because I couldn't find a good backpack or high back rucksack solution that would fit with my JJ's rig. If I could show it to you, it's around here and it's, it's packed away right now. But um, the JJ's rig actually sits higher up on your back um, when, you, when you've got it, uh, when you're wearing it comfortably, I guess. It's just a taller platform. So that ends up bumping into your rucksack, even if you have a, a, what I consider to be a high back rucksack, like these uh, Crossfire or like a, maybe an Alice could be. Um, but anyways, these, uh, this DZ rig is specifically designed to integrate with a rucksack. Um, it was designed from the ground up to be worn with a rucksack. And due to the amount the light fighters are wearing rucksacks and patrolling in the field, I was like, shit, if I'm getting the backpack, might as well get the rig. We'll see how it goes. So how is it designed, you say, or I say? Um, well, it's got these little tabs right here on the side, and these fall just beneath uh, your armpits, kind of, um, where your ammo pouches are on the DZ rig. And these are little clip beaners that go to these specific tabs that are included, oh, there you go, that are included with your DZ rig. You get two of these, and these are for rucksack integration. So the way it's designed is you take this little tab, you lock it in there, and then you take your rucksack and you thread this this panel, this side through an integration slot or a platform. I haven't found specifically where it goes, but um, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna use it this way. I like using this little rucksack integration platform as a fanny pack integration platform because I love my fanny pack and I think it is invaluable. So I just take these little uh, rucksack clips as I've shown in my last video, if you didn't see it, I just clip them on here with an old, uh, one of these little webbing dominator things. It holds on there just fine. And then I clip it on both sides and I have an integrated fanny pack with my DZ rig. If you didn't watch my last video, um, they were shown in there and that was pretty much, that's the highlight of it. That's just one little niche way you guys can use your DZ rig. What we are talking about today though is the Crossfire and specifically the Crossfire CF2 rucksack. So let me get it up on the table here for you. Now. Oh, there it is in all of its glory. Now, um, I would say that this is one of the best designed rucksacks I've ever used. I was a holdout on getting Crossfire gear for a while because one, it is expensive. Um, and two, I was trying out a lot of other stuff on the market and I just hadn't got around to this stuff. Um, a lot of the guys on our team had Crossfire gear and I was looking at these rucks and I said, damn, that looks well built. I wanna give it a try. So. Um, I decided I had a little extra scratch and we spent the money and we got a Crossfire. This is the Crossfire CF2 rucksack. Let me slide it back so you can get a better image of it. I've got it loaded down with a, a simulated combat load, like a 24 hour load. And uh, we're gonna go through that a little bit later. But what I wanna talk to you real quick about is this CF2 has one add-on here. This is the helmet carrier add-on. And I've got my helmet stuffed in there. And it also has on the add-on lid. I don't believe the lid comes with the, uh, I'm gonna get corrected, I'm gonna get shit on in my comments if it does, but I don't believe the lid comes with the, the ruck. Or maybe it does. I'm confused because I buy so many of these things and sometimes these lids aren't included. I'm starting to think now that this lid is included. So I'll put a little pop up at the bottom, the lid's included or not. But either way, this is one of the best designed rucksack lids that I've ever used. Um, so we're gonna rip apart the contents later. I'm gonna show you how it works. But first things first, um, a little bit of a disclaimer. I don't have a lot of hours using this rucksack. Still, every morning I wake up and I go walk with my Eberly Stock uh, F1 pack, which is right here. And I've got it, you can see it side by side, 
I've got it weighted down to about 65 pounds. I'm on the wrong side of the camera. Whee! I've got it weighted down to about 65 pounds, but you can see that this is just a much taller platform than the, uh, than the uh, Crossfire CF2. And this lid is actually drooping really bad because I really don't have much in this ruck. Disclaimer, this is a 55 liter ruck and I believe this is like a 35, 37 liter rucksack, but the 55 liter-ness comes all in this roll top right here, which I'm not using any of right now. Um, so the smaller version of this bag is also a 37 liter rucksack and it just doesn't have this roll top, which I'm not using right now. So essentially these are both side by side, as you see, 37 liter bags. And you can see how much taller this Eberly stock is than the, uh, <clears throat> than the Crossfire. And this is why it causes problems when you do have like an LBE style load. If you like chest rigs, there's one advantage to the chest rig, which I, I fucking hate. I don't think they're good for uh, this kind of stuff. But if you like a chest rig, some people do. Um, that is the advantage is you don't have that back load and you can carry the biggest, longest rucksack you want. So let me get this out of here because we're not talking about this Eberly stock wreck today, which I almost have a thousand miles walking in. And I'm excited to do a thousand mile review on it. But we're talking about this one. So this is the Crossfire CF2 rucksack. Again, it's got uh, the, helmet, uh, the, the helmet carrier add-on and uh, the lid on top of it. Again, a great design. And towards the back here, you'll notice that this is labeled a Crossfire CF3. Well, that is because all of their newer design rucksacks are using their CF3 harness system, okay? So you didn't get the wrong ruck, and I'm not telling you wrong. I did think I got the wrong one for a second, but then I had to look on their website. But they're included, this is the CF3 harness system. So this is just a, an improved harness system. Um, so back to full disclaimer, I don't have a lot of miles uh, in this rucksack. I've used it for basically, I've uh, thrown it over my shoulder for a few minutes, walking between the car and the parking lot for, for a few LARP missions and a few weekend warrior sessions but um, I have not really fully integrated the rucksack with the DZ rig all together for a nice long ruck. So I'm going to do that right now, and then I will be able to give you a good first impressions of how this carries. So uh, bear with me here. I'm gonna start putting this shit on. I am wearing my PT gear. It is like 90 degrees in the Midwest today. Bear with me. I'm wearing uh, Go Fasters and Skivvy shorts, but uh, I know I'm saying this is gonna be a combat load. I do have uh, ammunition and uh, a practical uh, weights in these, uh, in these two rigs. So real quick, let me go ahead and weigh them real fast. I got shit on last time for using kilograms. I don't know how to change it. Oh, unit. And let's see how much this thing's weighing in at right here. It's off and it's right at 50 pounds. That is perfect. So I got a 50 pound rucksack. I got water ammunition and we're gonna go through what's in there here at the end. And I'll talk about my first impressions with how this integrates with the DZ rig. And then finally, I'll also obviously be wearing the DZ rig and my fanny pack, let's give it away. And we're coming in at a smooth little, oop, just a little 11 pounds right there. So that's, that's your combat load. And uh, I'll show you what I've got in there. I've got a good amount of ammo, water, and uh, two little grenade simulators, why not? So that's all you really need, and a radio. Well, you should have. And as I put this thing on, you kind of see I scooped it up with like kind of the shelf, if you will, of my DZ rig. And right now, 100% of my weight of this rucksack is on my DZ rig, which is basically, you know, transferred to my shoulders. But all I have to do is tighten this, tighten this belt with a pull, and now I've got some good hip load support. So when you're wearing a rucksack, Integrated with your combat gear. You don't want it to be crazy tight, but you need it to be, you need it to stay on you. So there, I've got two sets of shoulder straps. I feel a little whopper jaw. That's probably because I got that 30, 40 mic mic sim. And then I also like using the breast strap and I'm gonna have to go under my mic clip. What would actually probably happen. So I'll pull this mic off. Oh, and I'm definitely gonna have to lose this mic. All right, so feels pretty good. Feels a little heavy, but uh, honestly, I don't feel any pressure points. I would say I'm pretty much, I'm 60-40. I'd normally go like 80-20, but I'm about 60-40 into the shoulders and my weight distribution right now. 
the rucksack looks like so, sitting on top of the DZ rig. Again, I'm not using the integration that is designed with, and I don't even have this rucksack buttoned on the bottom. And I'm gonna do this six mile to figure out if I like it better with a bit buckled or not. We might not like it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with no. Right now this feels pretty good. So, rock on is uh, about 85, 90 degrees. I'm gonna go punch out six miles, be about two hours, and I'll see you back here and we'll talk through these first impressions. What's up? Testing. All right, what is up, life fighters? As you can probably tell, I just got back from a short ruck in wearing the DZ rig in the uh, Crossfire CF2. Uh, I did four miles. I think our total weight is 75 pounds with this uh, salt loadout that I made up with uh, some bullshit in it. We'll go through that in a little bit. But uh, first off, while I'm here, there's no better time than when I'm dripping wet sweat and a little bit out of breath. Hey, by the way, my front yard's all uphill. That's why I'm out of breath. But uh, no better time to go through some of this stuff, how it worked for me. So. Uh, I'm gonna be holding my actual clip it on here for a second. And I'm dripping on it, but. Um, so first things first, guys. Um, I'm gonna take a step back so you can see me as a whole here. And I hope the lighting's good enough. I didn't really set this shot up or anything. But I'm wearing the Crossfire CF2 with my fanny pack. So this isn't part of the kit, the giddy up. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the DZ rig. On my back here is the CF2. And I got some shit loaded in it. It's uh, weighted to about 50, 55. And I think we got about 20 on the DZ rig. Um, All together, we're shooting for about 75 pounds. Um, shout out to anybody that's had to ruck with this much weight or anybody that's worn a flag on their shoulder that's carried a pack this heavy. Um, normally my rucks are like 50 pounds and this absolutely, the hills smoke me in this shit. So um, I'm glad I'm doing it. Uh, it's a good change of pace. But uh, right, let's tear this stuff apart and talk about first things first. First thing, my fanny pack mod. I love it. I'm keeping it. I'm still doing it. Um, when I've got this doll cinched down a little uh, tight, it's a little loose in the front because of the way I've got it affixed. So I might tighten this up by reducing these fixtures. But side note, if you're gonna carry anything of any weight in here, like I have right now, is just these two little training frags. Um, that is a lot of weight to be bouncing around right next to your man bits, especially if you're gonna do any shuffling or stuff. It's not like it's just gonna rack you clean out of the gate and just put you out of commission, but it's like a slow methodical, hello boys. And uh, it adds up over time and it give you that sore tummy feeling. It's no fun. Um, all right, so aside from that, um, I'm obviously not using the integration straps that came with the CF2 and the DZ rig. I got that from my fanny pack, and I don't mind that. I am, uh, you'll notice I've got two belly bands on right now. This top one is the CF2, and it really is not that tight. I had this mostly on for comfort, and so it wasn't flopping around. Um, all day I rucked with this very, very loose. So this is just nice and loose. Um, and that's just the ruck. What's really holding the ruck on is I have built myself a shelf with the DZ rig. And to do that, I've hiked it up to where I like to wear my kidney belt on my ruck, and I've tightened it down significantly. And now, when I'm rucking, you'll notice that I don't have a whole lot of weight on my shoulders. I typically like to ruck about 80% of my load in the hips, 20% on the shoulders. As I walk, things adjust, and you get more shoulder weight, and you gotta hike things up and change them. This gives you that option. But because I am on this DZ rig belt here, it's not a rucksack style belt with double straps. What I mean is it goes back to this thing and you, and you tighten it by pulling it in. This one you tighten by pulling it out. This tends to loosen up a little bit and it's also hard to get it as tight as your traditional rucksack pad would be. So back to the rug guys. Um, I'm still using my chest strap here and I'm holding my mic on with that. Um, but I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to do something here. Take the ruck off. Um, what I like about this ruck is it keeps some of the more traditional fixtures that Alice rucks have. This emergency bailout is, is works like this. You just get that out of there and that's going to pull this ruck apart and this should still all pop loose if everything's working as designed. There he goes. So that's your emergency fixture to get out of your ruck in a hurry. And that's actually pretty easy to put together. Um, other than that, if you can't get to these little things and actually loosen your ruck to take it off, you can always pop those. Woo! That went down in a hurry. But now you can see I'm wearing just the DZ rig. And with this still fixed pretty tight around my weight, my kidney pad, you can see that my shoulder straps really don't have any weight in them at all. Um, we're down to the DZ rig, guys. One thing I wish uh, was a little bit different about this is because it was designed to be used, hope you can still hear me, with a rucksack, I wish they made this more like a rucksack belt pad. And what I mean by that is I wish it looped back to here and then I tightened it by pulling both of my straps inward. 
instead of uh, having to yank this one outwards. Um, as I ruck, this one slowly starts to adjust loose, a little bit looser just as you go. Now I do have the Cobra buckle version. I don't know if the traditional one's gonna be any better. Um, I, I, I doubt it because it's just a single back, single loop through with the nylon. And that's just gonna slowly, especially as wet as I get when I ruck, it's gonna get loose. Um, other than that, this DZ rig makes a fantastic shelf at an appropriate height for your ruck to basically sit on. So I don't have to use the ruck belt hip, hip pad. Um, it just sits on this. And this Probably couldn't even hear me. I'm gonna go change, um, <laughs> get a little bit more comfortable and dry off, and then we'll rip this ruck apart and we'll talk about what's in it. Rock on, thanks for staying with me. All right, boys and girls, we are back. Thanks for bearing with me. I got a fresh shirt on and got a shower in, uh, got some chores taken care of for the day. And we are gonna go ahead and start digging through um, this stuff and talk about uh, how this went. Now, the, we're, I wanna keep this focused on the Crossfire CF2 ruck, which is right below me. But first things first, I did have to make a couple changes to my DZ rig while I was uh, rucking with it for the first few times and actually had a big load. First thing was uh, I had this little uh, IR beacon or this multicolored beacon on my shoulder right about here where my mic is. Um, I had to take it off because the pack's, uh, pack was rubbing. Um, so that's not a place where that can go. I'm gonna find a new location for that. I usually keep one little beacon on my helmet, but I usually like to keep one stuck in my rig somewhere in case I'm not wearing my helmet. So that's gonna go. All the other little danglies were okay because they were able to dangle out of the way. Um, <clears throat> other big change. Um, my little fanny pack, I have it interfaced with the included straps that come with the DZ rig, but I'm wearing it up front. Again, like I said, if it's got any weight and you're running with it, it's gonna start bouncing. It's not gonna feel great. If I was gonna go for a long ruck um, that I knew um, I didn't need the fanny pack for, I would ideally unclip this, stuff it in the lid. So that's one, another change I would make to the uh, DC rig itself. The other big thing I made, uh, I realized real quickly, I originally had this radio pouch running all along one of the front suspenders. Um, I thought it wouldn't be in the way. It was immediately in the way. Um, it became apparent right uh, right away. So I take it um, and put through it on one of the sides of my back right canteen pouch. And then I just clipped this little speaker mic on one of the tops out of the way. Obviously didn't need to get to any of that stuff on my ruck. I wasn't talking to anybody, um, but I had it and I could have ran that speaker mic up if I needed it, needed to integrate. So that worked great. Um, those are the main changes to this. Again, this is about 22 pounds of equipment. This is a kind of a salt loadout. Um, it's just ammo and water. We're gonna talk about what's in this um, later because I don't wanna make this video too much about that assault kit or uh, <clears throat> uh, what's in the, uh, the DZ rig, I'm sorry. I want it to be about the Crossfire CF2 rucksack. So here we have my Crossfire CF2. We weighed it earlier as 50 pounds with a little bit of water in that. Um, it might be a little uh, lighter now that I've drank some water, but not too much because I, I didn't drink much water. Um, you can see this pictured with um, this field or this integrated helmet uh, carrier. So let's start talking about this thing from the top to bottom, but let's start with this helmet carrier because this is actually not included. Um, I saw this and uh, I was like, oh cool, I, an integrated way to carry your helmet without just bungee cording it on. Um, I think it was like 25, 30 bucks, totally worth it. I love it a lot. Now this interfaces quite simply to get your helmet out first, you just loosen the straps and you pull it on out the top, give it a little wiggle. It's not hard, it comes right out. I could have even loosened that more, but I didn't because I'm lazy. And you got access to your helmet. Um, if you weren't trying to get your helmet or you're trying to get in your rucksack and this is in the way for some reason because you don't want the top access, these things come off real easy. Now I hope I can zoom. Let's see how well this camera zoom works. What, what? And we're gonna, yeah, right there. These little toggle tabs are pretty simple. They just Got a little flap so they don't pull out, but if you want them to pull out, you just kind of grab the tab and stuff them back through the way they came in the first time when you put it on, and boom, and you're off. So these two up top just pull right off. And then down comes this flap, which is really easy. So let's get the uh, unzoom out. Whoop. There we go. Flap is down. On the bottom is just four more of the same little locking mechanisms, okay? So I'm just gonna leave that down and tucked away. And while we're down here, I'll just say that I threw on my little sleeping pad. This is a cut down one because I really just, it was just a patrol bag. So I just needed to get a little bit of relief from my hips and my shoulders off the, cold, off the ground, a little bit of space off the, off, the, off the cold. 
So that's all that's down there for. And I just not included, actually, I think they do actually include shot cord, but this is just some heavier stuff that I had in the uh, team room. So I just got my heavy bungee cord and bungeed that on to the bottom, nothing special. You know, though, we're going over the ruck. Might as well look at what, they, what they've got for you. You've got down here a nice heavy duty drag handle. And then four of these links, which are designed for shot cord, believe you me. Um, everything in this, by the way, everything in this rucksack is so far, uh, so well thought out. This is the finest light infantry or light fighter rucksack that I've used in a long time. Every little nook and cranny is just about perfect on this ruck. Um, I can't believe it took me this long to get one. But <clears throat> on the bottom, you've got a carry handle, which is great. You've got heavy duty stitch. These are like just bomb proof stitching, um, little lat systems or bungee cord system. Also, while we're down here, you notice you got a bottom zipper on your, your main, you, so you can access the bottom of your ruck. So if you stuffed your socks in there like an idiot like me, all the way in the bottom and you wanna change the socks, you can still get to them. Um, again, the integration system with the actual frame here, let's boost her up, is more of these, this tab system. It's very easy to pop it off and in and off and, and, and wash it or whatever you need to do, maintain it. And then uh, as I spin her around here, and we'll spin it around to the harness system. Now, earlier I compared this to my Eberly, which is like my normal rucksack and it's set up, I have a long torso. So it's set up pretty, for, for pretty long back. This I have set up is a pretty much what I'd call a high back rucksack. This is how the pads showed up. I didn't have to change them, but they do include this fantastic little laminated sheet right here with all the instructions on how to adjust your pads and your harness system as well, way back here. <clears throat> they include a whole new set. This is included, whole new set of pads that replaces all these hip pads. And I think this is gonna be like a thicker or firmer material. So if you're not happy with the pads the way they are, you've got an option included in the box to switch them out. Um, as well, this harness obviously adjusts up and down and uh, this kidney belt basically stays where it goes. So you kind of adjust your shoulders off, off the kidney belt. If I were to be wearing this without, a ru or without my, my fighting load, I would adjust this uh, shoulder pad a little bit higher. Um, Cause again, I got a long torso. Um, okay, on to the lid. The lid of this rucksack <clears throat> is, uh, uh, lids are fantastic first off. Um, they're a great easy way to get to your, your just some, some quick gear you need to, batteries, socks, whatever it be, food, something like that, maps, whatever. Um, this is the best designed rucksack lid I've ever used. Hands down, period. Um, it's got three compartments in here, I believe. Now, I might just be eating my words when I, when I say this, but I believe it's got three compartments, and you can access the entire lid through the outside of the ruck, or if you open it up, you can get to the entire lid through the inside of the ruck, which is mesh pouches. You just gotta tunnel through some mesh pouches. It's, it's awesome. Let me get this guy out of the way. We're carrying this um, because this is a fantastic little 40 mil simulator, obviously a Mark 79 simulator, or that's what we're using it for. <clears throat> At the Light Fighter Studies Group, we were doing some uh, assaulting and attacking bunker lanes and some trench fighting lanes and stuff. So we're using that as a sim, as well as a signal, a signal and illumination. It works fantastic for that. So. Um, professional lipers we are at Light Fighter, ignore some of my strange gear I have in here. Um, back to the lid guys. So like I said, this lid can be accessed from the outside of the inside. Um, <clears throat> unlike some lids, which you access from this side, I like it better when you can get to it from this side. So you've got two distinct zippers right here's going to get you to your top pouch. And this one has some organization in there, which uh, you can hit or miss. Some people like it, some people don't. Looks like two pin pockets and a nice uh, pouch little wider that I've got a compass and a cut down signal panel in. So you can give you just an idea of what it holds. And also plenty of room for more in there if you want to start stuffing stuff in there. Um, let me zip that back up. <clears throat> this one a little bit bigger. You can see that I've got my snivel gear, an emergency bag to carry some more, more stuff with in there. And then this pouch, is what I was talking about, it has an additional set of zippers in here that'll get me to the third mesh part of my lid which I actually have some signal and illumination rounds, illumination for the M79 sim. Um, likewise, like I said, flip it open. And this first pouch is my signal and illumination rounds. And if I go tunneling through the next zipper, granted it doesn't, it's not designed to be open like this. Hey, crossfire, maybe make this zipper a two way. Probably not critical, but you could dig in there. You get in through this side. I don't know why you would, because you could just flip the lid, but Maybe Crossfire has overthought about that already. Probably not a good idea. 
Anyways, the lid is still uh, fantastic. It's made of the greatest nylon ever. Um, I really like the, the nylon they've chosen for all of their gear lineup. It's ripstop and it's good, good stuff. It's soft and it's lightweight. It's just really top notch. And then the lid attaches with the same system as all of them, um, except for you can have two places to attach your lid. Say you wanna extend your load a little bit more. I can pop the lid off. I've got it on the low setting and I can switch it up to this high setting, which is gonna give me a little bit more height in my rucksack. Right now I got it on the low setting because I don't like carrying that much shit. Um, likewise, your lid will detach here and here. And as you spin it around, your vertical compression straps are what integrate with your lid. If you take it off, you can just replace these with uh, just some normal Fastex buckles if you don't want the lid for any reason. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want the lid. Um, so, but then again, that goes right there. So your lid can come completely off. Um, if you want to get like a day pack variant or try to make that into a day pack, um, Gucci on you. That springs, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sweating like a pig, guys. This is 90 degrees in the Midwest. This brings us around to the main, though. Um, again, on top, huge, heavy duty drag handle, and then a zipper pouch that gets us right into our main compartment. So, whether you want to go through the zipper for some fast access or you want to get to your water, which is just right in there. It's just another zippered quick access into your main in case you won't want to deal with the drawstring. Now, the main has got a drawstring system like a traditional Alice. I actually like it a lot. The hardware is a little bit modernized, but still just a classic old Millsurp design. Pop that out, pull your drawstring, open your bag, and you can start getting to your top loaded stuff. So right here, I got some, some M79 SIM rounds and uh, a bag of fragmentation grenade sims. All my heavy stuff, of course, and then my socks. <clears throat> but uh, I love this because it's a traditional drawstring closure system, just like a normal Alice has. It gets nice and tight. It stays secure. It's easy to work with your eyes closed or in the dark too. And then again, to back this up, let's say you don't want to top load your ruck, they give you the option. Now let me re um, loosen these horizontal compression straps are also worth noting is very good design. They are tracked all the way from the sides of the ruck through the lat system designed for holding additional pouches through the system, through a plastic buckle system. And that plastic buckle is so I can take this strap when I pull it and I can keep it on the side and it doesn't get lost behind my helmet when my helmet's here. So when I need to tighten my ruck and my helmet's on, I, I have the straps on the side. Everything, everything's well thought of on this bag. Uh, props to Crossfire. Now, Back to where I was up top. If you don't want to use the drawstring system or you really want to get some detail in this load or you want something at the bottom, who knows why you want to do it. Real simple toggle system. Put the toggle uh, switch through, backed up by some Velcro, and you've got just a main open zipper to get into all your stuff. So what I'm carrying, obviously, a little bit of chow, a little bit of uh, night vision, um, a sleep system, uh, poncho, tarp, What is this? Oh, the 550 tape, uh, Kim sticks, some, some, some random stuff. And then obviously I got two water bags. So um, this is the interior of the Crossfire CF2. It's a 37, again, 37 liter rucksack. It has three pouches hanging in here and it's got these hangers along all around the top. So again, it's using this toggle system to hang and it's these pouches that are secured at the bottom and the top with the toggle system. This one's for a water bag, this one's for a water bag. They've said this one's for a water bag or a radio maybe. Um, this one also comes with a mid compression. Again, these three hanging bags, completely removable with these toggles, very quick and easy to get them out of there, but they're also, they're not coming off the side of my rucksack. So these water bags stayed right on the side for the 15 miles I was able to ruck with this. Um, and then I don't keep a third water bag in here, but I could, or a big radio. I just keep this one empty right there. Um, I haven't decided what I wanna do with it yet, so it's empty. But uh, super well-designed rucksack, again, it's front loading or side loading. And if you need just in the bottom, you can just zip in the bottom and get in, your, get in the stuff you got bottom loaded, all right? Um, so far, I love this. I got about 15 miles walking in it. Uh, I just started a few days ago when I started making this video. That's when I put it on. That was about three or four days ago. I've been doing my morning four miles, five miles, whatever they end up being. Um, with this, um, the weight has been crushing me, holy shit, along with the Midwestern heat. But... Uh, 
I love this ruck. It is very comfortable, and it is comfortable when it's integrated with combat gear. Um, it feels no really worse, um, just heavier because it is, than my morning rucksack, uh, my Everly stock with the F1 mainframe, which is, which is a fantastic designed ruck for a lot of weight. Um, guys, this is the Crossfire CF2. Uh, I covered most of the things I think I wanted to cover on this rucksack specifically. Um, the frame is like a traditional plastic uh, molly, I guess, frame. Uh, it's designed to flex. I haven't had any complaints about it. I haven't really abused the shit out of this one yet, so I can't tell you it to its durability. I can't speak to that. But so far, it's been fantastic. No complaints. It's been a really um, <clears throat> a feature-rich backpack. All the little nuanced things you sometimes add to your own rucksack, they've already done. Um, the stitching is absolutely biggity bomb proof. Um, the cloth is a great choice. Um, and they've been really nice people to deal with. And they're fucking Australian. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Um, so, guys, this is the Crossfire CF2 rucksack with the CF3 harness system. I hope this has been a little bit of an updated review so you guys can see me dig through this bag. Um, and hopefully I can get some more Crossfire bags in here. I got a lot of other guys with bigger ones um, that are on our team. And then we can dig through those and see, what it's, see what's what. So, uh, I know this has been a marathon of a video, guys. Those of you guys that made it to the end, you fucking rock. Like and subscribe. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.